I just make it precise and brief uh, presentation for your understanding. You know, like most of the people I believe in this group are the doctors or uh, are if they are healthcare professionals. So I will try my level best that I can make things more clear to you. So first of all, you know, like uh, the major difference between OVT and IELTS is OVT will test your, uh, you know, like uh, communication skills that is being required in the healthcare setting. The kind of communication or we can say that it's your clinical communication skills in simple word. Either it's reading, either it's listening, either it's writing or speaking. The OVT has been designed to test your clinical clinical communication skills or it's more uh, focus on your clinical communication skills that is being required for you when you start your job. Whereas the IELTS in general will test your communication in English language in general because IELTS do have a broader horizon. You know, like most of the people from different profession, they will be, uh, you know, like taking IELTS exam. For that reason, Yanre or the language or the uh, linguistic register in IELTS is open. However, in OET is from the medicine. So, this is a general insight to the OET and IELTS, uh, like how they are being tested. The candidates are being tested, for example. In IELTS, we have absolute grading system. We do know like on which score we can get 6.5 or 7 band or 8 band. But in case of uh, OET, although it's a uh, common myth, most of the people, they are saying, okay, 30 is your B grade. We can say 30, 32 is a B grade, but the, the defining criteria is the relative. It's not absolute criteria as like we have in our exam. So it could be a positive or a negative point. Positive in a sense, if there will be a, a paper that was quite tough or you would experience a quite tough exam in your OET for specifically most of the candidates were complaining about the reading in the last session that it was quite tough. There was some topic related to artificial intelligence in medicine and uh, mostly research based uh, topic in part C are quite complex and tough for the candidates for uh, you know like and for that reason uh, they all, always complain about the you know reading so if we have a relative criteria it could be a positive thing as well so you know like let's analyze in detail about the IELTS or the OET for doctors we do know the established pathways if you want to go for UK US uh, Australia or IMC. These are some general requirements like for IELTS we have 7.5 with no less than 7 for UK and for maybe the rest of the, uh, the pathways as well. However in OET for UK, AMC and IMC you need to take straight B uh, for those candidates who had done their house job and have their some clinical experience in Pakistan but those people who just Want, had their degree in uh, like M complete MBBS and they want to pursue their house job or the foundation year in UK they need to take you know like 400 it is B but you know like as uh, no mostly the candidate do require 350 for PLAB exam but for the foundation year you need 400 straight anyhow for USMLE recently not recently but been a year or so they have revised their criteria and now they do accept C plus which means 300 in writing and this is B per for your OET but for IELTS, it's remain the same. For pharmacists, if you have any pharmacists for UK, again, it's 7.5 with no less than 7. Uh, but for US, Australia, and for the rest of the countries, they do accept 6.5 and with a 7 overall band. However, for OET, uh, it's being B in all subtests mostly. So for nurses, IELTS, 7 in reading, listening, and speaking, and 6.5 in writing in UK and Ireland. But 6.5 overall with 7 in speaking in US for nurses actually and 7 street in Australia 7 in speaking with no less than 6 in Canada and for OET except uh, UK we need sorry except writing we need B in all subtests for UK and IMC. For US there are different states and they do have uh, different policies for the language exam. Here are some examples uh, for different states. Let's say Oregon they need B grades in all subtests which again they need C plus C plus and so on. So Followed by, you can see that what to choose. This is a most confusing part for the candidates. And that's why, you know, like when we were discussing this thing with Dr. Ali, the founder of IBRC. So he want to, you know, like give a clarity to the uh, students that they would be able to decide beforehand. Before we can start discussing to take IELTS or OET, something I would like to add on that's not in the slide is that when to take IELTS or OET. You know, you need to be very smart in uh, taking this decision according to your time scale. Most of the students from the Madison I have seen specifically, they do take their OET or IELTS exam with reference to their plan of PLAB exam. If they have a margin, you know, like uh, to take the PLAB exam seat, unfortunately, we are having some difficulty in acquiring the PLAB seat. But recently, you know, in the June when they had announced the PLAB seat, so I have seen most of the candidates, they had planned earlier, they booked their OET exam early on so that they, they got not any, you know, like trouble in booking the exam. So that is the optimum time for them. They had cleared their probe and 
they were waiting for the uh, house job. They had some free time, and in that free time, they had cleared their OET exam. So it's a very good time if you don't have any other things ongoing, and you can clear your OET or IELTS exam in that time. It would be helpful for you, you know, like to uh, to take decisions, for example, for PLAB, for IMC, and so on. If you clear this thing early on, anyhow, coming back to the points like IELTS or OET, what to be, uh, what we, what we can choose. So I have some analysis on that. Uh, first of all, as you know, that IELTS is a very uh, it's a kind of exam that is being there for the more than thirty plus years. So that's why we have a like broad spectrum material available. Even for, if you can just look into the Cambridge books from book one to book 17, though uh, like we, we are practicing mostly from 11 to 17 these days, most of the academies. But still, if you want to practice, if you are weak, you have a lot of material to practice. That is a very plus point and it's not expensive even. It's not uh, costly due to the availability of the data. And secondly, exam itself is very cost effective. You can take maybe two or three exam, or maybe two exam as per the revision of the fees recently, you can take two OET exam in the fees of the IELTS. Like for example, it's around 58,000, I think. And for OET, if you book your exam from Pakistan or from the Pakistani card, it will cost you somewhere around uh, like 130, 135, depends upon the bank. However, there's a, there is a clue for you. If you want to book your OET exam, you know, like you can save 15 to maybe 13,000 rupees. If you just book your exam and use the credit or debit card of uh, like international debit card, it may give you some, you know, like uh, money saving of around 15 to 13,000 rupees. Anyhow, let's getting back to the point. No Cost effectiveness was the second point in IELTS. The third thing, as we are always in the rush to book the exam because uh, doctors mostly, they are having, you know, like things ongoing. They are having different exam, uh, like they're maybe the MBBS the final exam, maybe the FCPS, they may be the IMM, whatever. You can see that they're always busy in studies. So it would be difficult for them to manage the time to take the, the date. And if the date is not available, so it's a challenging thing for you. So in IELTS, we have a plus point that you have a variety of dates for paper-based exam as well as computer-based exam. And specifically for a uh, computer-based exam, you will have multiple dates, even two to three dates in a, in a week time. And most effective or appealing part for the candidates beside price is the early result in computer-based exam. If we are going to take the computer-based exam, you will get the results in two to three days. So it's a very positive thing specifically when you are looking for a PLAB date or uh, specifically for the PLAB date and you want to get it done early on. And if you have a skill, that is something else that we'll discuss in the next slide. You can get it, you know, IELTS maybe tw two, twice or thrice in, in, in two weeks time on computer-based exam with early results. And more important thing for IELTS actually, in listening, we mostly have a British accent. So you know which accent do we practice. Now coming toward the cones, cones in IELTS, irrespective for, for just specifically, if I can talk about other language exam, not only IELTS with OET in comparison. So Yanre is non-medical. So it might be a challenging for you that you should have poir to different listening resources. Why people switch from IELTS to OET, this is the cons of IELTS, I will explain, it's the writing portion. We have seen many students, you know, like they had attended their IELTS and they were stuck with the writing part with 6 or 6.5 band and they were not able to get it through even they had tried for maybe 20 times. Like the extreme cases we have seen and they were fortunate enough like when the OET had been uh, recognized by the GMC and they had taken their exam and you know like they had done in the first go. Although people have a speculation OET is much easier than IELTS, it's not the case. Both are the different exam. Why it will be more appealing for you, you know, like in comparison to OET because the familiar familiarity that you'll be having. So grammar, as most of the doctors, nurses, pharmacists, they are being far, far away from the grammatical resources, from the language, from maybe tenses and tenses. If you are not into the language part, if you're not into the research part, maybe or if you're not into the content writing, then grammar would be quite challenging for you. I've seen many people just are having uh, a single tense in their writing. Similarly is the vocabulary. Even if you are strong in your uh, general English, but there might be some topic that you might not be strong in. So vocabulary could be a challenging thing. And idea generation is the most compromised part in the doctors and nurses when we talk about the IELTS because of the exposure to the different topic that we might not listen, read, or write in our daily life in, of medicine. Most of the doctors, they won't have any problem in the speaking, uh, specifically. Nurses do sometimes experience some uh, challenges in speaking if they are not strong. 
However, I have seen many people who are not much proficient in English language. They are also concerned specifically to the speaking part in the second component of the cue card. They compromise. The, the most compromised part is the is the idea generation. And again, speaking also need vocab. Speaking also need grammar. But speaking might not be that much of challenging part. But writing is challenging. But still. It can be considered as a con to the doctor and nurses. And for IELTS, actually, the required core that is being, uh, you know, like that, that make you qualify for the GMC registration for USMLE and so on. It's passing probability with reference to your required score is quite low. Still, in these dates when uh, we can say we are also experiencing some difficulty in reading and listening part of OET. So, I would say that a passing probability is quite low. Uh, so, it's respective of its price as well. Anyhow, so moving on toward the, for example, OET. What are the pros and cons of OET? Start with the pros. In OET, we have the medical register. Register means the technical language, the vocabulary you know, the content in reading, listening, writing, speaking, everything will be related to your medical register or your environment. Adaptability factor. You will be uh, able to adopt, you know, like listening, reading, speaking and all the sub tests because of the familiar environment. Like speaking, even if you do counseling in your native language with the patient, the steps are the same that, are, that you're being taught in your medical colleges. Although due to the patient load, we might not be able to practice those counseling steps that you are being taught in your medical colleges or in your training, but still you have this thing in the back of the mind. So, this is adaptability factor that will make it more appealing. And not only that, but will be a kind of replica to the workplace, not here, but there, whenever you are practicing uh, with reference to the patient ethics, empathy, and so on. Grammar and vocabulary that is or maybe would be a nightmare for the students sometime. So it might not be that much of a major player in OET. I'm not uh, discouraging the idea. To work on the grammar or the vocabulary but it might not be a major we can say game changer and it is in arts in OET although there might not be a major grammatical mistake in writing and speaking still to keep this thing in mind similarly speaking and writing as I mentioned earlier it's a kind of replica writing a referral discharge maybe request or so on whatever you'll be doing is a kind of you can say a circle of your life that you have been practicing in Pakistan or would be practicing into your uh, choice career country that you have selected. When you start your job, a kind of same replica, even before job, like say for the people who are going to take lab exam, the speaking portion is similar replica to your lab too. Although they will be more intensive as compared to OET. The, the people already, you know, like they said, this is a language passport to the OET. Why is that? Because as I already mentioned, the OET is testing your clinical communication skills not your general communication skills. In reading part A, it's a very appealing part, although part C that we'll discuss in the cones, reading and listening part A, you can achieve almost 100% score with little practice. If you are having a good skill, you can almost score 100% score. Now coming toward the cones, the most important thing for us you know, while living in Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, these countries where the wages are quite low for all of the professionals. So it's quite expensive. And specifically, if we talk about Pakistan, so due to the fluctuating price of the dollar, like a Australian dollar even, oh, we can have impact on the price. So it's expensive. Although, and even it's double to ours. And second problem that you may face in OET is the availability. Availability is a challenge. You have only two dates on paper-based exam. You now coming toward the computer-based exam, still we may have two to three dates or four dates, but still availability is a challenge, challenge because most of the people will already book that. Reading part C and listing part C in OET is very much challenging. Uh, most of the people uh, have been experiencing uh, difficulties in managing part C. So, why is that? Because there are two type of, uh, you know, like test, I would say. Uh, first is academia based and second is research based, either reading and listening. So there they would use the inference skills, like to test your inference skills because of the same medical register. They, it's not like uh, it's just to change synonyms. Although we have three different nature of question, explicit meaning that is comparatively easy to do so. Then we have inference meaning. Inference meaning is quite challenging. Inference means that sometimes you might not be able to see the line. You have to infer from the given context or the contextual meaning. And challenging part in part A of the listening, unlike IELTS, we have a range of accent because of the broad spectrum, you know, like the working environment that you that the OET is being accepted now, right? 
Anyhow, so these are some pros and cons of OET uh, that we discuss. Now, what to choose? First, you need to ask yourself your weak areas. It's writing, it's reading, it's listening or speaking. What are your weak areas? Then analyze, you know, like either IELTS is best for me or OET is best for me. Then you need to see how much time is being required. Do not listen to the people as most of the time there will be uh, misguided advice by some of the students maybe or some of the people who had qualified IELTS or OET. They misguide you that I have done maybe preparation in five days or seven days. There might be some people who would be able to clear maybe in one day, but you can not compare your skill with them. Maybe there's a possibility they were quite proficient English uh, beforehand or they were you reading, listening, writing, speaking in their life. So you cannot compare yourself with anyone. You need to see yourself where I am standing. What, what are the difficulties I have been experiencing or what are my weak areas? So analyze yourself see yourself and then take for the decision to go over there. It is, you can see that either IELTS or OET, which is the best exam for you, as I've discussed, there are few things, you know, like most of the people in healthcare, they are opting OET over IELTS just because of the fact uh, that the passing ratio is high. However, some time candidates do adopt uh, IELTS as well and they would be able to pass. But, you know, like in comparison to OET, I would say that still the passing ratio is quite high. In IELTS, we can say that we have 2 in 10. Like out of 10, only 2 people will be able to get their 7 band in writing and rest rest can be taken, but 7 in writing, this is a challenging point. In OET, still they, even if I can talk about the writing, so maybe 9 out of 10. But overall, if I can say still it's 7, 6 out of 10, uh, because most of the people, they are not able to make it in the reading and listening. And I believe the, the problem that they were not able to take it, that they don't take this exam seriously. They don't practice much. Uh, as per the real scenario, you have to simulate yourself for the exam. Either you're taking IELTS or OED. Anyhow, so what solution for that thing? Let, let us help you. If you can, you know, like want to decide which exam is best for you, we'll arrange free orientation class for you on IELTS or an OET. So you can coordinate with Dr. Ali. He will, uh, you know, like he will tell us then. So on any weekend, we can arrange a free orientation class on IELTS and OET where we discuss each and every aspect like from marking criteria, from the number of question, the type of question, and for the writing types and everything, it will be a detailed orientation on both of the session. And uh, then you will be able to decide which is best for you. And accordingly, we can move on, right? So uh, this is a brief overview on the pros and cons of IELTS and OET. What would be the suitable thing for you accordingly? I tried my level best that I can give you a brief uh, overview on that. As we can see that, you know, like uh, if we can just make a summary of our things. The first we discuss about the price and second we discuss about the availability. Then we discuss about the, the medical or non-medical register. Then we can see that writing and speaking is the replica for your real time. Even reading part A and B, mostly they are topic from the medicine, so comparatively easy for you. Uh, part C is challenging, and one of the contexts is, uh, is challenging because of the research-oriented article and reading and listening as well. So for IELTS, actually, we have non-medical register. There could be any topic in reading and listening. Uh, difficulty is progressive in reading, and same is the case with the listening. Difficulty is progressive. We have different uh, type of question in, in IELTS and OET that will be discussed in the orientation session, by the way. But this is a small, a brief chunk of comparison between two sessions. 